we were discussing the topic of light concentration and in one of the previous videos i derived this formula for the concentration that uh, you can achieve in a system like this and i had related it essentially to the to this incidence angle of my uh, of my incoming light which was i defined it as alpha and then the final angle on which uh, the angle at which this uh, this light which is concentrated uh, hits this disc on which I want to concentrate my light and I had essentially pointed out that uh, it's proportional to the sine square of this angle of uh, incidence uh, on my final disc and it's uh, inversely proportional to the sine square of this uh, of this angle at which my uh, light is uh, hitting my uh, receptor then I had uh, further commented that uh, this uh, this concentration would be maximum when essentially this uh, uh, this sine square beta is maximum, and that would be the case when uh, this uh, beta is 90 degree or this two beta is equal to 180 degree. So the maximum concentration, what it uh, means is that uh, uh, it would be achieved when this incoming light is essentially just hitting this uh, final disc at a grazing angle or essentially it's hitting this disc at this angle of uh, uh, of 2 beta of 180 degree or a beta of uh, 90 degree which corresponds to uh, this uh, grazing incidence and you can see that would be the point where this uh, final disc is uh, collecting as much light uh, it can so it's collecting all the light all the way till this uh, grazing angle and that gave me the value of uh, maximum concentration to be equal to n square divided by sine square alpha and then i further said that this uh, alpha would be essentially uh, the minimum this can be would be uh, related to the angle at uh, what uh, the angle or the angle of the cone which uh, sun subtends on earth so this uh, the minimum value of theta s uh, for uh, concentrating sunlight would be uh, equal to, or the minimum value of this alpha would be equal to this uh, angle that uh, sun subtends uh, at a point source uh, on earth and that is equal to 0 0.27 degree and that gave me a maximum value of my concentration but most of the systems that people are concentrated light systems that people used uh, for concentrated uh, photovoltaics or even uh, solar thermal or concentrated uh, solar power they operate at concentrations much lower than this uh, much lower than this uh, theoretical maximum and you can kind of see the reason for that uh, from this uh, this simple equation again and I can write, rewrite this simple equation so that I can take this uh, this denominator over here to this side. I can, I can rewrite this as, as essentially my concentration multiplied by sine square alpha has to be equal to n square sine square beta. And then I can further say that this sine square beta, it's always, uh, it will going to lie between uh, 0 and 1. So I can say that my concentration multiplied by sine square alpha is going to be less than or equal to n square which is the square of my refractive index so what i see from this uh, formula is essentially that uh, if i increase the value of my concentration my value of sine alpha which is allowed is essentially going to decrease or uh, if i increase this concentration then i'm going to i'm going to need to track this uh, this angle very accurately or essentially what it's saying is that if you increase the concentration then your uh, the amount of variability that you're allowed in terms of uh, the incident uh, light or this uh, incidence angle is going to reduce and uh, so essentially if i increase my concentration i'll require a very very good uh, tracking so i require a very good uh, tracking for these uh, high concentration system another way to think about this uh, signs uh, this uh, alpha is to think many people you know think about it or call the term they refer for this is the acceptance angle and uh, that is uh, shown over here so let's say you know i have light uh, incident at uh, at a particular angle which is uh, very close to my normal and then i have this lens which is concentrating this light onto this disc which has the radius r so when this light is uh, close to uh, close to my uh, uh, normal incidence this uh, this would be essentially you know very close to the center of this uh, 
uh, of this uh, smaller disk. But as I try to increase the angle of this uh, incoming light, I see that as essentially, you know, this uh, this focus part will move towards the edge of the disk. And if I increase this angle furthermore, then you see that my focal point is essentially out of this uh, disk. So I uh, essentially I can call this angle, this maximum angle, which is allowed before this uh, light moves away. Uh, from this small disk on which I want to concentrate my light. I call this angle typically as uh, as my acceptance angle. So what that uh, equation, I, I can again restate that as essentially my uh, concentration multiplied by essentially sine square of my uh, this acceptance angle has to be less than uh, less than n square or uh, less than equal to n square so whenever i am increasing my concentration i am decreasing this uh, acceptance angle so i require a very precise tracking and that essentially many times limit the maximum value of uh, concentration i can achieve now another thing i think i want to mention and if you read uh, papers about these uh, uh, about these concentrated system or you read articles about them. A term that you will often find uh, mentioned is this imaging versus uh, non-imaging optics. And uh, I want to illustrate that by uh, using this uh, case of this uh, parabolic disk. So the first thing that you know might come to your mind if you think about you know how do I design a concentrator. So you might think that I can take uh, this parabolic or this circular mirror and I can use essentially to concentrate this uh, sunlight uh, from sun onto this uh, small disk. So this small disk has a radius of uh, A and this uh, big parabola it has uh, let's say uh, it has this area which has this uh, diameter of uh, 2D or radius of D. So I can uh, see that uh, for this system this is uh, I can uh, see that this is an imaging system or essentially this uh, parabolic disk, it will focus all the parallel beams of light to this uh, focal point at which uh, I have uh, placed my disk. So this uh, light which is coming exactly parallel will essentially get uh, focused at the center of this disk. And this uh, light which are essentially, since sun is not exactly a point source, this light is coming in this cone uh, with this solid angle uh, theta s. So you see that uh, this side of the cone or, you know these two sides of the cone they will get uh, projected on these uh, two edges of this disk and you'll uh, obtain essentially this uh, image of my uh, image of the sun so if you essentially you know look into this uh, disk and i don't advise doing so because it would be very highly concentrated and previously you know generations of astronomers have tried that uh, and uh, there's a serious possibility of uh, going blind but Anyway, if you are wearing glasses and you do look over here, you'll see essentially an image of the sun which will be created uh, on this uh, small disk. So this is called an imaging system where essentially you create an image of uh, what you are trying to concentrate. And the limit uh, for this uh, imaging system is, turns out to be the maximum uh, concentration you can get for uh, imaging systems turns out to be not uh, n square by sine square alpha, but it turns out to be one fourth of that. So it turns out to be uh, one fourth of that. So these imaging systems are not uh, the most uh, efficient systems for uh, concentrating uh, sunlight. So another more generic definition of these uh, imaging systems is to essentially uh, think of these uh, in terms of these uh, point sources uh, A and B. So uh, imaging system will essentially take this point source A and uh, create an image of that uh, over here at the receiver. Similarly, if you give it another source B, it will create an image of that back at the receiver as well. But this is not the most optimal thing for uh, doing light trapping. If you want to trap the light on this uh, receiver, which has a finite diameter, a more uh, optimal system to essentially concentrate this light is this non-imaging system where you have this source A. So all the light from that uh, source A is collected on this receiver, but uh, it does not form any distinct, any distinguished image where you can essentially, you know, uh, see or you can see an image of this source A. But you know we are not uh, we are not concerned about uh, creating an image of the sun when we are designing these concentrated systems. All we are concerned about is collecting all the photons. So from a perspective of uh, of concentrating uh, sunlight, these uh, non-imaging systems, uh, optical systems, are much better.
Now another question which sometimes puzzles me and uh, you know might uh, might puzzle you as well because I think you and I think uh, in the same way is that what are these non imaging system you know I'm generally used to thinking of these concentrated uh, concentrated as these uh, big mirrors or these uh, big parabolic troughs which essentially you know they take uh, sunlight and they concentrate onto this uh, focal point so those are you know typical imaging systems so what are these non imaging systems so I want to give you some examples of these uh, non imaging systems so shown here is uh, is one such uh, systems and it's called a uh, compound parabolic uh, concentrator so you can see or it's uh, it's often abbreviated as a cpc where it's a compound and uh, parabolic you can see that the shape of this uh, is uh, is uh, parabolic and it is a concentrator because it's uh, concentrating the site so these cpv cpc systems you can see that uh, uh, they essentially uh, form a case of these uh, non imaging systems so you might have uh, light uh, coming in and uh, it essentially you know it uh, it goes and hits this reflector plate at uh, all kind of angles and this acceptance angle would be essentially given by uh, let's say you have a ray of light which comes and hit uh, exactly at this uh, very grazing angle or uh, maximum limit would be given by this uh, light which hits it exactly at an angle of uh, 90 degree and you can see that if you make this light incident at uh, angle which is uh, greater than your acceptance angle so let's say that my acceptance angle was theta and I make the light uh, incident at an angle uh, higher than that so you can see that essentially it will come in and it would uh, essentially bounce back or you know this angle would be essentially such that this is greater than uh, 90 degree or this is uh, uh, essentially on its way out and uh, it essentially goes out of the systems so this is uh, one way to design this uh, non-imaging optics and this cpc can in fact come very close to this uh, theoretical limit but you can see that this is you know this parabolic and this compound uh, this uh, compound parabolic shape is not the easiest uh, you know which uh, which glass makers or uh, people who make these mirrors might be most uh, accustomed to making so a more uh, easier way or a more practical way which is uh, many a times used to uh, make these uh, non imaging optics is to essentially take these uh, take this uh, take this uh, imaging uh, optic such as this uh, parabolic uh, uh, parabolic uh, disc or this uh, circular mirror and then use it to essentially uh, make this light incident not directly on my solar cell so let's say my solar cell is located over here or my uh, CSP system is located over here so instead of making this light directly incident on the Sun what I do that and do now is essentially place this uh, non imaging uh, uh, secondary optical source so I place this secondary optical source over here and many a times it could be another set of mirrors or it could be just uh, a prism where uh, this uh, in fact could have a, a refractive index of uh, n which is higher so I can make the rest of this uh, system uh, in uh, uh, in air or you know not using any special material but I can place this uh, secondary optics over here which is uh, a glass prism let's say with a refractive index uh, of uh, of n and uh, this uh, this secondary source it does uh, two things so instead of uh, uh, producing this image it randomizes this light uh, which is coming in here and it can take light from these uh, you know these uh, uh, off uh, image producing uh, sources and uh, it essentially creates a non imaging system and further if I design it uh, with a refractive index of n then my maximum concentration also increases by n square so these are few examples uh, that you know hopefully give you some idea of how this uh, concentration systems are designed